Hey everybody, I am here in my empty classroom ready to share with you all about um, how to get your kids to write. This was a request. Um, someone had posed a question on one of my other videos and I love when you guys do that because then I can make a video or videos that you guys want. So if you're new here, I'm Danielle and I am a 4K teacher in Wisconsin and I'm ready. So let's get started. to get your kids to write. Now, I'm not gonna ask my kids to sit down and say, okay, now it's time to practice your A's, practice your B's. I want it to be as genuine as possible. So one of the ways um, is just make it available all the time and everywhere. So we often put, um, I actually write, have my list here of all the things I want to talk about, but we put whiteboards and markers and erasers. Actually, I use, um, socks sometimes this is like a sock from the dollar store usually i cut them but i guess i didn't cut this one um and you put them out at a center um you can put um like a basket with little um magnetic letters in them i do have one but it's packed up so i can't show it to you that's gonna be like for a lot of the supplies today and these ones are able to just I was able to pull out of the cupboard but uh, a bunch of the other ones i didn't so i put a whiteboard out and you know what you can see what happens. Maybe they take the letters out and they trace them. Maybe they take them out and they um, they copy the letter and write it down. Um, maybe they don't do any of that. But um, so that's one way to do it. Also, I put these whiteboards out too um, at centers that where the kids want to take turns. So if it's a really popular activity, then we write put this down and then we have the kids write their names on it. And then as one person leaves, we can go to the list and say, oh, you know what now. Susie, it's your turn. Look, you're next, so it's your turn. So it gets them practicing their names. So that's one thing I do. I'm gonna put that somewhere where I can see it. Another um, activity that kids love are little writing trays. So these ones, this one was Melissa and Doug, and I think this one was actually from the dollar spot at Target. I don't remember what was in it. And it's funny too, because you can see that it's kind of a brownish color. It had cinnamon and sugar in it one time. But put these out at the center. The kids can use their finger or they can use um, a little mini paintbrush or the, um, the eraser end of a pencil to practice writing letters in here. Um, I put, you can put colored sand or sugar, um, flour, salt, cinnamon, um, that kind of stuff so that's a fun thing and then this one has a little tray so you could have cards um, that they flip up and they put in the tr in here so when they are have it the card is standing up and then they can copy it in here those are a lot of fun something else I put out oh this one I don't have obviously but a cookie sheet where you can do it right on the table with shaving cream and the kids can draw pictures and practice writing letters or names and things like that. And when we teach kids how to write, it's not always going to be, let's write the letters, let's write the numbers. Sometimes it's just working on those fine motor skills of the wrist or holding a marker and making marks. It doesn't matter that if they're writing the letters properly or not yet. So that's, I just wanna make sure that everybody knows that when I'm teaching writing, it's not specifically practicing proper formation of letters and words and names and all that stuff. So shaving cream is a lot, a lot of fun. I know there are some places that don't allow the shaving cream, but we do and the kids love it and it also smells really good. Um, we also have chalkboards. These are part of the handwriting without tears or learning without tears um, curriculum, which we don't use that curriculum but these were all in our classroom so we have chalkboards and we have the little magnetic um, little boards too um, but these ones are fun to practice um, writing letters on here sometimes we take them with us and we go on like a little if it's a rainy day we'll take them and we'll go on a little letter hunt around um, the halls of the school and they can copy down all the letters or numbers or whatever that they see. Sometimes we do shapes too. They just, oh, I saw a circle, I saw a circle, you know, that kind of thing. So again, just practicing, working on fine motor skills with a chalkboard. And these are fun to put at centers too, just to have them out so the kids can 
do whatever they want with them. Next, a blank bingo sheet. This can be put at a center. I usually with this, I start with it in small groups so the kids can see um, how you play bingo um, and then put, giving them a, um, what are these called again? Dry erase markers. And then um, having the kids write the letters on here. Now this is laminated. It's just a piece of construction paper and the bingo sheet I printed out for free from somewhere. Um, and you can use this dry erase marker and then just erase it off of that. So having the kids writing their own letters in bingo and then having a little basket or bucket of letters and then like, taking turns pulling them out and putting stuff on them. Um, another thing is um, having journals available to the kids. Now we have one journal for each kid that they keep the whole year and I bought mine last year, this past year at the Do Target Dollar Spot. I actually bought a bunch, so I do have more for next year. Um, I think there were eight in a pack for $3 and they were really cute and colorful. Um, but we use those a lot during small groups and we do a lot of our, um, our work about studies in them. So the kids are drawing and writing in those. But then also to have journals, especially at the Discovery or Science Center, whatever you call it, um, so that they can write their observations and what they're learning or draw about what they're learning um, at the discovery table. So having journals available to them is a great way to have them and get them to write. And then at each center, we have a mini clipboard and a little stack pad of paper. I don't know, somebody was writing something very important on this one, but um, they use it for anything like they could at the block center they can use it to um, draw a plan at the uh, dramatic play center they can use it to take orders like a menu this one was at the discovery center so somebody was learning about something i'm not sure but um so these are hanging at every center and it's just got a little hook here i believe i got these off of amazon if i can find them i will link them down below um, you can get ones at a dollar store that are the big ones, if you would prefer those. And then I just put a command hook at each center and it just hangs with the pencil and the yarn right there, ready to go. At our writing center, of course, there there's a lot of opportunities to write there. We have envelopes and um, writing paper. Usually there's smaller pieces that can be folded into fit in the envelope. Sometimes they have something fancy on them, but most of the time they're just a plain envelope. Um, we have a ring with all of our the kids' names, one per kid and the teachers, um, so they can write letters to their friends. Uh, I will often have words, maybe that we're learning about some of our vocabulary words up there so that they can, um, if they're writing a letter or taking notes or whatever, they can look up there to reference. Um, but having that stuff available, the kids this past year loved writing letters. I, have, I had made a mailbox two years ago and had that out and the kids just loved writing letters to each other and at the end of the day we would hand out all of the mail. So that was a lot of fun. Um, having paper at the um, Dramatic Play Center is a really good idea. Paper and crayons and markers, pencils and scissors because um, let's say you have a, a pet store in there and you're playing with them and you're talking about the pets and well, how much does this pet cost and how to organize them. And so eventually I get the kids like kind of their idea, but kind of my idea too, to sort the, the pets and then make little signs for them to find out, like to tell how much each pet costs. So, you know, the kids grab a piece of paper that's already there for them and um, they write cats, however they want to write cats, and then they write how much it is. So um, that was one, one example of how we use that. Um, you could have paper at the block center because if they're making a little, a little town or a city, they can be labeling things, they can be making signs, just making sure that, I guess that's one thing I wanna say again, is that making sure that you have the materials available everywhere, not just at the writing center, but everywhere. And my last idea, did I say at the beginning that I was gonna share 10 ideas? So these are just 10 ideas. And the last thing I want to share, number 10, is um, for the question of the day, we have, not at the beginning of the year, but later in the year, we give the kids a slip of paper and a pencil 
um, on their spot when they come in every morning and they write their name and they use that little strip of paper to answer the question. So that's something that you do every day. Um, in the beginning of the year, uh, depending on the child, it's sometimes just their name card and they take their name card and put it to, um, over on the question to answer the question of the day. Um, sometimes there are kids that have a little strip of paper with their name written in, in a, like a yellow marker and then they trace it. Um, some kids get smaller pieces of paper and then by the end of the year I really like everybody to just have a small piece of paper. Um, some kids still get their, their name card put out too so they can you know copy their name. Um, but it, it's great for name practice. And those are my 10 ideas. I want to just say again that when you are teaching kids to write, it's not about the proper formation of the letters. They will get that eventually. I think it's about the experience and opportunity to write, working on their fine motor strength and fine motor control, and also um, writing with a purpose. And it doesn't have to be a specific, it shouldn't be like drill work. It should just be available and natural and make sense um, to do it in the activity that they're doing. So thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you have any questions or any ideas that you wanna share about writing, put it in the comments down below and have a happy day.